We have a quiz problem here, and people do quite well on it. I noticed that some people actually uh, worked ahead a little bit and did the solution of systems by elimination uh, on the homework. And then uh, haven't checked all the solutions, but all the steps look like they'll be followed. So, solve by graphing, it's okay. And I'll do the graphs over here because I'll number these just so we know which equation is being graphed. And then uh, we'll be able to do the system by elimination. Uh, just move it straight down the page. So, now for number one, X-intercept, as you know, occurs when Y equals zero, and you're going to get six. Y is zero, X is six. The Y-intercept is X equals zero, so Y equals negative three. Negative six, Y equals 18, so it's zero, negative three. And you can review how we did this previously. Again, the x-intercept occurs when y equals zero. If you let y equals zero, you get three x equals 18. Divide by three, you get six. And that's your x. And if x equals zero, if this goes away, you get negative six, y equals 18. Y equals 18 over negative six, which is negative three. Now I'm saying that for the benefit of anybody who might be watching, because everybody here are I think uh, understands what to do. Okay, so um, we'll just say, okay, here's x equals six, and I do recommend that you do these dotted lines. Uh, and right here is the x-intercept for first equation, and here is the line y equals negative three. So by Declaring that x equals six here and y equals negative three here, we know the scale of the graph. We can scale everything else. And then we sketch a line. Okay. Now I think in one case the line had the right slope, it might have been too high. It might have used zero three instead of zero negative three, which would have led uh, to an incorrect solution, but something would be easy to do right the next time. Okay, so and here now the intercepts are going to be what? Uh, if y is zero, 8x equals 12 gives us x equals one and a half, three halves. So so we can find three halves. Now, if this is six, then here's three, and then here's two, and here's one, and one and a half would be about here. Okay, so let's label these intercepts. Uh, this one's going to be six, zero. This is going to be zero, negative three. This one is going to be three halves, zero. And then if we let x equals zero, we get 2y equals 12. And that's going to give us a y-intercept at 0, 6. So the y-intercept for number 2 is 0, 6. Well, if this is negative 3, then this would be positive 3. And 6 would be up here somewhere. Okay. Uh, so let's say 0, 6 is up here. And then we sketch the line. And here's our point of intersection. Now, make sure I'm recording. Thing does not show me unless I do something I never had to do before, but easy enough. Okay. So the intersection occurs here. So what do the coordinates of the intersection point look like? Well, you come up here. What's x equal to? 
from this line. What's y equal to on this line? Well, if I was to make an honest estimate based on the way I've done this, I'd say x is about 1.7. Okay. However, suspecting that uh, when I made these problems up, my feeble brain used integers. We're going to say maybe x equals 2. Well, maybe that's a little off because maybe I screwed up when I did this thing and didn't get what I expected to. But we'll just say it's closer to 2 than 1, so we'll just go with the integer. Okay. And this is clearly, uh, you know, between 0 and negative 3 and closer to negative 3. So we're going to say y equals negative 2. And it turns out that that's the solution. And we can test that. Point two negative two at the target to read maybe the intersection point is two negative two. So x equals two, y equals negative two. And equation one, this gives us three x minus six y equals eighteen. That would be three times two minus and it's negative two, not negative three, uh, minus six times negative two equals 18 to the question mark. Well, yeah, we get six plus 12 equals 18, and we know that's true. And then we take equation two, and we plug in Uh, two for x and negative two for y. We're going to have eight times two plus two times negative two equals 12. Put a question mark in that. We want to check and see if it's true. But this gives us 16 minus four equals 12. And we know that's true. Okay. So that is our solution. Now let's see. If, you know, if I'd have done my mental calculations a little bit wrong, and I often do, I might have had the wrong numbers over here. And maybe this one is has a little less negative slope than it did. And maybe the solution is between two and three, and some decimal between two and three. Okay? We wouldn't be able to estimate that accurately from the graph. Now we were able, just assuming that the solutions were integers, we figured out what the closest integer would be to each coordinate of the intersection point. Okay, if we want to get an accurate solution, even though by checking we know what the solution is, what do we do? Our strategy is we want to eliminate one of these variables. Okay, and it would be easy to eliminate y if we had a six Y here, okay? Because then when we add the Ys, they go away and we have just an equation in X. So what we do is we copy down equation one. We're not gonna change this one. And then we do three times equation two, meaning three times both sides of equation two. Now, if we got to do some arithmetic with that, we don't do it here. We do it somewhere else, but we don't really need it because everybody was able to do this last time. Uh, not everybody chose to multiply this by three because last time we multiplied it by two. So imitating what we did last time, that'd be a natural thing. As I say, some of the class uh, had already worked through uh, one, one of the assignments that's due before next class and, and knew exactly what to do and might well have done that originally. Anyhow, we do three times equation two, three times eight is 24. And we're gonna multiply both sides by three, so we distribute the multiplication, so we get the six y. 
tenths, three times 12 is 36. So now I'm going to do equation one plus equation two. Again, I don't mean this equation one plus this equation two. I mean our last set of equations. This is now, when we look back here, this is our equation one and this is our equation two. So we add them, we get 3x plus 24x, which is 27x plus 0y equals 54. That's going to work out. Okay. Then we don't have to number it anymore. We just go ahead and solve. We solve for x, and we get just plain old 27x equals 54. So the 27x divided by 27 equals 54 divided by 27, and x equals 2. That's no surprise because our graph pretty much shows that. Okay, what do we do next? Well, we have to find y. So we take the two that we got for x, and we plug it into one of the equations. It doesn't matter if we use the first one or the second one. You now, these visuals and arrows say, I'm going to do the first one. So now I'm going to get the equation. Three times two minus six y equals eighteen. So the other thing I've changed is equation one. Just to talk, and then I say from equation one, we get to this. Well, this gives us six minus six y equals eighteen. So we subtract six from both sides. And then we divide by negative six and we get y just negative two. Now you all have been good from the start at solving uh, linear equations. So I just put the dots in here because I think everybody can solve those. Okay. If not, you really need to go back and review because that's a pretty simple equation to solve. So we need to maintain that skill. Okay, so solution. X equals two, Y equals negative two. Okay. Now there's another way we could have done this. So I'm going to do it in, in a less efficient way just to show you what happens. It just happens that negative six is a multiple of two. A whole number multiple of two, right? And we want to deal with whole number multiples. We pretty much want to avoid fractions. So I'm going to solve the system once more. Show what happens if, let's say that, well, three, eight is not a multiple of three, right? Okay, now let's just say uh, that in many cases, you know, this coefficient won't this coefficient won't be multiple of this coefficient, right? So if they're not whole number multiples, what you have to do is something like this. So here's the first equation: three x minus six y equals eighteen. Eight x plus two y equals twelve. I'm going to multiply equation one by three. Uh, by eight, I'm sorry. And I'm going to get 24x minus 48y equals uh, 144. No, 124. Ah, eight times 10 is 80. Eight times eight is 64. So, like I said, 144. Okay. 124 just didn't sound right at all. All right. And then we do equation two by negative three. And you notice if I do that, I get negative 24x minus 6y equals negative 36. Well, now things match up. If I add the equations, my x's go away. Okay. 
Now my strategy was what? Well, I know if the coefficients are three and eight, if I multiply three by eight, I get the same thing I get if I multiply eight by three. So that'll match up my coefficients. I want one of the coefficients to be negative, the other to be positive, so I don't have to worry about subtracting the negative or adding, you know, it, it makes it much easier with signs if I have these coefficients equal and opposite. Now, I'm going to leave it to open math to explain to you. You want to find the least common multiple of these things to keep the numbers reasonable, okay? It's not absolutely necessary. It just makes less work. Uh, so it's good to learn that, but uh, even if you just use numbers that could be smaller, as long as you do the arithmetic right, you're still going to get the right solution. Okay. I mean, I could have multiplied this one by 16 and this one by 6. Would have the same coefficients. I just had bigger numbers. There'd be no point in doing that. Okay. So these still will make. And we end up with 54y equals 108. So that clearly y equals negative 2. 2 times 54 is 108. And you got a negative. Then we plug y equals negative 2 into either equation. I'm going to get fancy with my arrows. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the second equation. Doesn't really matter. Okay. And that's going to bring me then around this equation. In equation two, I'm going to get three times negative two minus six y equals 18. You know, put my negative two in orange since it came from the orange circle. So this comes from equation two. Well, that gives me negative six minus six y equals 18. So negative six y. Oh, copy down the number wrong. Number's 12. What's going to work out? Okay. It still is going to work out. What's wrong? It's 8x. Okay. You can copy down the equation, right? Uh, it's 8x and 2y. I used the coefficients from the first equation, but I was claiming to use the second equation. Okay. So it's 8 times negative 2. <laughs> Things being stubborn, has a thing being my brain. Okay, uh, it's two. Okay, I'm confused, I apologize, but I had to use the eight in front of the X. The X would. Still wrong. I guess I've got to be careful. Okay, got 8x plus 2y equals 12, and y is negative 2. This gives us 8x plus 2 times negative 2 equals 12. Now that I know to look at the second equation, like I said, I was gone. And get everything straight again, double checking since I screwed it up. There's my 8x, here's my 2, y is negative 2, so that goes here. And remain consistent with my colors here and we do have 12 on this side now this is probably going to work out we get 8x minus 4 equals 12 8x equals 16 x equals 2 okay now the whole point of that is it doesn't matter which variable you choose to eliminate. But sometimes one is easier to eliminate than the other. There's nothing particularly difficult about the numbers we got here. They're a little bigger than the numbers we got here. Would be no big problem. 
But since we have the negative and the positive here, and this is a multiple of this, we picked on Y. How come we couldn't have used X? But Y was just set up for us a little better. Make sense? Okay. So I think you're going to be okay with this. I know one of you is okay. <laughs> okay. Because you, as long as you uploaded your stuff, it looks like you're probably going to have 100% on that one. Um, and I, th I think everybody else can, you know, can nail it equally well. Okay. Okay. Another way to solve a system, and we won't usually use it with linear systems. Linear systems mean you just have X and Y with numbers in front of them and nothing else. If there was an X squared in here, what we're doing here wouldn't work. Okay. Let's say this one had an X squared, this one had an X. We'd be done for. So what do you do then? Well, You solve by what we call substitution. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we have equation one 3x minus 6y equals 18. Equation two 8x plus 2y equals 12. Now, what we do is we're not going to do multiples of the equations. First thing we're going to do is solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So I'm going to let you vote which equation you want to solve. First equation, second equation. Okay, y'all are doing great. Well, yeah, we're going to use the first equation. You want to use y or x. Thumbs up for y, thumbs to the side for x. Oh man, you can't, you, you got, you got risk problems here. Okay, let, let's see everybody rotate their wrist. Okay, well, that's all right. Okay, so we're going to solve for y. We could have picked either of them. Okay, well, please do that. Just go ahead and solve the first equation for y, and I know you can do that quickly. Now, quick warning, if you're watching this and happen to see what I'm doing here before you do the wrong thing, uh, we're not going to let x equal zero because we're not finding the intercept. We're trying to solve the system in a little different way. Okay. And everybody wanted to let x equal zero. That's fine. That's a great habit. Just make sure you know what you're doing when you let x equal zero. You're finding the y intercept. And we're not going to be trying to find the y intercept. Okay. So you keep x in there and solve the first equation for y. Okay, well, I'm going to run through the steps. I think everybody's on track with this. But again, people are watching. Presumably. We have the equation 3x minus 6y equals 18. We're going to add negative 3x to both sides. That's going to get rid of the 3x. We're going to have negative 6y equals 18 minus 3x. Now put some dots in here. If you're not totally secure, you should put the whole step. We do 3x minus 6y minus 3x equals 18 minus 3x. But I think uh, at this stage, uh, we know that uh, if I put a step down here that kind of skips a step, you know what step is being skipped and you can fill it in. And you should, if you're not sure, how we get from here to here, okay? And then we just divide both sides by negative six. And when I say add negative three X, automatically I mean do this to both sides. Divide by negative six, that means do this to both sides. When we divide by negative six, we get Y equals, and I'll put some dots there, fill in the steps if we need to. It'd be 18 minus 3x. Over negative 6. All right. Now 
Now, there are two ways that we can express this solution. Right now, we've got a negative in the denominator. So we multiply the numerator and denominator by negative one. And we get 3x minus 18 over 6. Now, that might be a little mysterious. So I'll make a note. Multiply both sides by negative one. We get negative 18 plus 3x over 6, which is then the same is what I write here. I just write the 3x first and the negative 18 because usually our x's go first. Okay? So you might ponder that. Uh, you could get around the whole problem. By distributing the multiplication by 1 over negative 6. So negative 6 goes into 18 here. Negative 6 goes into negative 3x here. And that equals negative 3 plus one half x. So here are two expressions. Say exactly the same thing. Okay. You could use either of these expressions for y. Which expression would you rather use? Let's do it this way. Come up toward the west or thumb toward the east. Okay, just to make sure everybody's wrist is loose. Okay, so uh, thumb toward the west, you'd rather use this. West is that way. Okay, well, everybody pick these. Everybody wants to use this one. I'll do it both ways just to illustrate. These are insights into height, the meaning of the algebra and stuff like that. But it's pretty much six and one half dozen of the other. Personally, I would use this one. But uh, there's nothing wrong with using this one. Okay, so now we have a solution. We have actually two forms of the solution. Let me first say, plug this solution in number two, then solve. Well, let's take do that in two steps. Let's not worry about solving it before we plug it in. So what do you get if you plug in this expression for y in the second equation? Go ahead and write it out. Okay, now using this solution, everybody voted. I know Gina Andrews, people wanted to use this one. This would have been fine. Uh, but for many reasons, this one actually works out a little better. Let's see what happens. So we have, first of all, we have 8x plus 2y. Well, what does 2y mean two times this expression? Okay, now, there it is. We want to simplify things a little bit. What's the next step you would take if you want to simplify that left-hand side? The right-hand side, of course, is as simple as it can get, unless it was maybe zero. Okay, I'll make sure you've all done this. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing this online, you've got to get 8x, and then 2 times negative 3 is minus 6. Now, 2 times 1 half x, well, 2 times 1 half is 1. And now we've got an equation getting pretty simple. Okay. So what do we do next? Well, uh, again, one person wanted to add 6 to both sides. That's fine. 
I would have added the 8x and the 1x first, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but I'm going to do it the way we'd ordinarily do. Let's completely simplify the left-hand side before we start operating on it. It's a little less opportunity to screw up. But uh, over here is going to screw this up. So we get 9x minus 6 equals 12. Well, that gives us 9x equals 18. A few dots there for step, step for skipping. And a couple more dots. And we get x equals 2. Now, hopefully you did that because it's a lot more fun to discover that this works because, of course, x equals 2 coincides with the solutions that we got both by graphing and by um, solution x equals 2, right? It's the same system, so x had better be equal to 2, no matter how we solve it. All right. Well, that's good. And then we just do as usual. We plug the x equals 2. Well, I'll just say Plug x equals 2 into an original equation. That means either this equation or this equation. Okay? Well, you see that we actually did that in the first equation, and we got y equals negative 2. So we don't have to do it again. But if this is a brand new thing, of course, you'd have to do that step. Once you solve for one of the variables, you plug in, and you'll be able to solve for the other. So plug x equals 2 into one of the original equations. We get y equals negative 2. So our solution is again x equals 2, y equals negative 2. Does that make sense? That's your process. Now, yeah, I want to go on and talk about exponents. There's another thing I would like to have time to do, um, which would be to uh, let's change the x in the second equation to an x squared. Okay? So that there's no hope of doing a solution by elimination. Okay, now the heading here says solve by graphing. In the case of anybody's jumped in the middle here, we did that. But left space down here, solve by elimination. So we did the solution by graphing here. Now solve by elimination. And that proceeds from here. Okay. Make sense? All right. Now let's see what I want to do. Board space. We did a little work on exponents up here. And I'm just going to pose a couple of questions, see what everybody knows, what they don't know. What do you get if you multiply x squared by x cubed? And what do you do if you do x squared and then cube it? All right. Well, we got at least one answer here. And 
We got x to the fifth and x to the sixth, but they were in the wrong place. Okay, but that was good. You know, I didn't attempt it and answer. Let's see what this really should be. We agree that x squared times x cubed means, well, x squared means x times x. We multiply that by x cubed, which is x times x times x. Well, that means how many x's we got multiplied together here? Show me some fingers. Five of them. Now we can remove the parentheses. That's x to the fifth. Now you want to always remember this. If you ever get confused about whether you need to add the exponents or multiply them, this example tells you. And it's very clear if you had x to the 59th times x to the 723rd, you'd have 59 x's in a row, then 723 x's in a row, which would give you 789 x's in a row. Okay? And you would just add the exponents. Okay? That makes sense. Make sure you understand this example. You can always write it out if you're ever unsure of what to do when you have an expression where you have a, a, a quantity to one power multiplied by the same quantity to another power. Doesn't matter what the power is, doesn't matter what the variable is. Okay. Now, what does x squared cubed mean? Well, it means x squared, which is x times x, but that's cubed, so you got to do that three times. Now, does everybody understand that that's what this means? You cube something by multiplying by itself three times. I could have written it out. In fact, I'm going to write it out a little different. Make sure it's clear. A little more direct, say that this means x squared times x squared times x squared. Okay? Or then, what I wrote before, x squared is x times x, multiplied by x times x, multiplied by x times x. And now we can remove the parentheses. We have six x's there. And this is x to the sixth. Okay. So, right there's two of your main rules for exponents. So, we can write those rules all wrong as far as it goes. Let's see. Do a little bit. Okay. Still recording. Gonna pause that. Everybody needs a little comedy break now and then. Okay. So rules. On playing off of what we just did, x to the a times x to the b is x to the a plus b. That works for x squared times x cubed because a would be two, b would be three, a plus b would be five, and you would confirm what we just did by writing out all the x's. And then x raised to the a raised to the b power is x 
to the A times B. Okay. Because A is how many X's you've got here. You're going to repeat this expression B times. So you're going to have A times B X's all in a row. And go back to the X squared to the third power. Okay. Or if you like, you can also do X cubed squared. It's going to come out the same either way. All right. Now let's see. Um, I could assert the rule, but I want to show why it is. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. Let's do it like this. What power of x then would you multiply by x to the a to get one? Well, you got to tell you something else. You're going to say that x to the zero equals one. Okay. Now, common mistake, people think x to the zero should be zero. No, there's no power of x to zero, okay? Unless x itself is zero, okay? So I'm giving you this question and this information. So what it comes down to then is what power of a times what power of b, oh, oh sorry. What power of x do you multiply by x to the a to get x to the zero? Well, it turns out that the power you got to multiply by because this rule. A plus, you know, if you add these powers, you got to get zero. So I'll do A plus question mark must be zero, right? What do you add to A in order to get zero? For example, if A was three, what would you add? Show me with your fingers. What would you add to three to get negative three, right? If A was 47. What would you add to 47 to get zero? Well, negative 47, most of you don't have that many fingers. Okay. A plus what equals zero? A plus negative A equals zero. Okay. So, X to the A multiplied by X to the negative A equals x to the a minus a. So x to the a times x to the negative a equals x to the zero. Okay. But x to the zero equals one. Can you solve this equation for x to the negative a? What would you do to both sides so you'd only have x to the a left on the left? Okay, now this is a little bit weird. You haven't seen an equation like this before. So I can maybe throw you for a loop, but just think about it. Okay, I'll write it up here. You 
You got x to the a times x to the negative a equals one. You want to just get x to the negative a. So couldn't you just divide both sides by x to the a? You say x to the a times x to the negative a divided by x to the a equals one divided by x to the a. Okay. Now, how does that simplify? Okay, again, this is a little unfamiliar. Not everybody got it, but some got it. And, and some uh, tried to pull a method out of a hat and it didn't work. Okay, and that's okay. <laughs> you're gonna you got to be good with it but once you've done the assignment and exponents, okay? And get used to the way they work. Okay, well, you know, what do I have here? It seems pretty obvious that this and this are the same thing, right? Okay. So, just to be really explicit, this divided by this gives us one, so we have one now times x to the negative a. So x to the negative a is one over x to the a. All right. So now we've got two more rules for the exponent, one of which I just asserted. x to the zero equals one. And that's something we just declare to be true. And now there are good reasons for declaring it to be true. I'm not going to have time to show you the good reasons this time, but next time, hopefully, I'll have time to do it, and, and we'll, we'll get to that. But whether you understand it or not, just accept this and never think that something raised to the zero power is zero. It never happens unless well, I'll just say it never happens to zero to the zero is undefined. Okay. Okay, and then our other rule is x to the negative a equals one over x to the a. Now there are a couple more. What's x y raised to the a? Well, I can do this. Just as an example, x y squared means what? It means xy times xy, right? Which means x times y times x times y. But of course, the order in which we multiply four quantities doesn't matter. So we can write this as x times x times y times y, which is x squared times y squared, okay? Well, if it's xy raised to the a power, well, if it's xy cubed, we'd have xy, xy, xy. We could still get three x's by three y, multiplied by three y. So x times y to the a is x to the a, y to the a. No. Quickly. We could write it out very similarly. X divided by Y raised to the A power is X to the A divided by Y to the A. Now you take these rules and apply them. You know, you're going to want to look at some of the examples of open math as you read the book and so forth. But not get good with these because they're really important for what's coming up. That they, they, most of what the rest of what we do uh, makes pretty heavy use of the rules of exponents. Okay.